he started school, he was younger than all of the other kids. The very first day of class, his teacher sent me home a letter saying, your child needs to be evaluated for ADHD. I see these tendencies. I said, I hope you do realize that he is only four years old. She proceeded over the course of a week to tell me every day that he couldn't keep still and that he was fidgety and that he couldn't keep his mouth shut. Your child needs to be on Ritalin is basically where she was headed. And I was just, I was so overwhelmed with disbelief. My child was diagnosed with ADHD by the school's principal. First, I was just like, wow, you know, because it came to us as a surprise because all we knew he was doing great in school. I just kept saying, look, don't, let's stop the conversation on medication because I don't believe in it, I won't do it. She then threatened me in the sense of telling me she used to be a child social worker and she's seen kids taken out of their homes for not going along with the diagnosis. The choices that the school gave me was either drug your child or your child will be taken. My son was three years old when he was diagnosed with ADHD, um, ODD, and possible bipolar. I totally trusted the doctor when I took him there. You know, I thought that he was a professional, he's gone to school for this. Because I worked with him, I thought he was a good doctor, I thought he knew what he was doing. So I went ahead and I put him on meds. He's been on Ritalin, he's been on Concerta, they put him on Paxil. I mean, we tried different drugs, different dosages, because each one that they would have him on would have a different side effect. My son was in elementary school, early second, third grade and the teachers were telling me he's very rambunctious and can't stay focused and I should consider getting him on medication for kids with ADHD. Um, I ignored it initially, but then I kept feeling the pressure come and come, so I thought, okay, maybe I need to do something. And uh, I took Jason to see a psychiatrist, and after one, two meetings, he was prescribed antidepressants and a drug for ADHD, Adderall. Immediately, within a couple of days, it took a toll on Jason. He, he, he was listless. He had no will for to, to eat, to communicate. And I did call the doctor and he said, oh, just lighten up the dosage and whatnot. But after not even a week, barely, I think it was like six days, he, I would say, attempted suicide. And I'm just like, oh my God, what's happening? The doctor's opinion was that my child needed to be on drugs to change his behavior. The court took my rights away from me based on the doctor's recommendation. My son's personality is completely different on the drugs and off the drugs. So on the drugs, he is not talking at all, um, quiet, um, lethargic, and angry, bitter bitter and angry um, and not eating and not growing. I was sick to my core. I, I couldn't believe that I had those rights taken away from me. I actually started working part-time at a vocational school and I had only been working there for two months and they said, we're gonna take the students on a field trip to the psychiatric museum. I was the only instructor to go with three classes of young adults, knowing nothing about the museum. So I came to the museum with this expectation and it was like halfway through the museum maybe, when I was like, this is not what I thought it was going to be. And it was really interesting. But when we got to the section about the kids, it blew my mind. I ended up being at the museum after the students were done. I was still at the museum for like another hour talking to the staff. I went to the internet and Googled, do I have rights not to drug my child? And CCHR popped up. I called in the morning and I got the receptionist and they put me over to the legal department right away. As soon as I got a hold of the legal department, they told me I don't have to drug my child because it's against federal law. I just started looking for any human rights organization or any law that I could pull out of my hat and take to court and say, 
you're violating my child's you know rights as a human being and I found CCHR I emailed CCHR and someone got back to me very quickly he responded and I was like oh, no way <laughs> I was stoked <laughs> a friend passed on a video from CCHR it was meant to be that I saw that video and it really changed how I felt. I reached out to CCHR. As an instructor uh, that taught medical assisting and medical billing and coding, I had brought my students here to CCHR, so I was already familiar with the services that the organization provided. Having CCHR's website and all the information there was a, a just an incredible resource for me. I walked into my doctor's appointments armed. I had better knowledge of this DSM manual and um, basically called her out on it. You know, I said, so what test did you give my son to determine his ADHD? And she said, oh, well, you know, uh, uh, well, well, uh, <laughs> we observed him. <laughs> uh, well, um, you know, she stumbled over her words. She really didn't have anything. I wanted to see proof. Show me something. She had nothing. Having so many people that I could reach out to and give me advice to deal with the situation made a humongous change in his education. I almost lost my son in, in a matter of six days. I almost lost my son. And immediately the first, second day, I was already losing him. I was losing him that fast to the drugs. Through coming through CCHR, I saw the dangers. I got to read the literature, I got to see the videos, I got to experience it firsthand. And it's ugly, it's very ugly, but it's an ugly truth that we need to face. CCHR is definitely not trying to make anybody feel like they did anything wrong for their children or their family. You know, they're here to support you. They're here to help you seek out the correct information and weed through what is fact and what isn't fact. Every person that I've met with CCHR is going so far above and beyond. Anything I needed, it was there. If I had a question, I could call. Being off the medication has changed my son's life. It's changed my life. I'm so adamant now that this is not gonna happen to my other two younger children. It's not going to happen to anybody's child if I know about it. If you don't know the law, you, you think, wow, I'm going to have to drug my child if you want to keep your child with you, if you want to keep him home. The services that they offer are superb and you need to arm yourself with the information because your children's lives may depend on it one day. CCHR just started feeding me all kinds of information and kind of just held my hand while I walked through this um, ugly litigation. I went and I hired more attorneys and I had them appeal my case and I won it. I had like all this arsenal. <laughs> but once we got the information we vowed, we made a commitment, no more. Together we went to the bathroom, to the toilet, opened them all up, threw them in, and we flushed them down and we said bye, never again. We're done. I didn't know about the federal law until I spoke with CCHR. And I was gonna be able to keep my son without drugging him. That was probably the best day of my life. Having CCHR behind me was huge. It pretty much saved my child's life. It's like no other organization I've ever seen in my life, ever. I'm so, so grateful to CCHR, I'm so grateful. I just felt free finally free. It just made me stronger. It made me realize that I could do so much more than I thought I could do. I don't feel alone. I feel empowered. There's people like me out there. As long as I possibly can, I will spread the word about CCHR. If it's the last words out of my mouth before I go to the grave, I will spread the word. <laughs>